Uh, today I'll be finding the derivative of, hmm, how do I say this, where it's a polynomial, but it's not exactly a polynomial, but basically something of the form of this, 1 over xn. I'm going to find a derivative for that. So without further ado, um, let's just say lim small change in x approaches to 0, okay? Then we just, uh, the first part is pretty simple. We just write out 1 over x plus dx to the n minus 1 over x n. Okay? Now, what I want to do is I want to combine these two. And if you know how to combine them, it would be lim dx 0 xn minus x plus dx n over xn x plus dx n over dx. So I just combine these two. I multiply to the denominator xn here, and then I multiply to the denominator x plus dx to the n here, and then you could combine them. Okay? Oh, and yeah, hopefully you know what I did here. So I multiply top and bottom here by that, multiply top and bottom here by xn. Okay? And then we get this. Now, um, let's further simplify this. This just equals xn x plus dx to the n dx. All right. Now here is the most important and most difficult to understand about the proof. Um, so this is just the bi uh, if you know binomial theorem, we can actually just. Um, you know that xn is one of the terms. So we get xn minus xn, all right? And then we know the second term would be, let me think here, it would be negative, well, let me think. Wait, hold on, let, let me think for a while. Be negative, oh yeah, it would be negative n x n minus one times dx plus dot, 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 dx squared okay so we know xn is in here right we know xn is in here by binomial theorem we also know n times xn minus 1 is here so um hold on I, l l let me just write it out for you to give you an intuitive understanding so it'd be x plus dx x plus dx x plus dx n times all right n times okay now, if this is n times, we can see that we multiply x, x, x. Out of here, we get xn plus dot, 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 okay? And uh, what other term we get? Well, we could, we, you could see that um, we can do x times x times x times x, 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 xn minus 1. So let's say, and then times dx. So let's just say we multiply dx, and then we times x times x times x, n minus 1 times. So we get this. And then we can also do it for here. So let's say for this term, we say this is dx. And then we multiply x times x times x times x times x times dx. We get another one of these terms. And then for the third term, we can do the same, where we cover up x. We multiply dx by x times x times x times x times x. And then we get another one of these terms. And we can do this n times. So this ends up being n x n minus 1 dx. All right? Hopefully that made sense. And uh, something crucial to note here is that every other term has a factor of dx squared. So that's why this means every other term and they have a factor of dx squared. Only these two terms don't, don't have a factor of dx squared, okay? Because um, if we were to like, if we were to do this, cover these two x's, then we get dx squared. Everything else is dx squared. Only these two terms do not have a factor of dx squared. So we chose the two biggest terms, uh, so to speak. So we have this, all over xn, x plus dx to the n times dx. All right, now I'm gonna ignore the limit for now because it would just be tedious. So it would be 
That be that just becomes zero, and then we get this. Okay, now uh, let's go to this page. Uh, so we have this right. Now let's let's split these two apart and let's divide out dx. So we get that lim dx approaches zero. Well, this dx just cancels out with that. So it cancels out. Then we get negative x, and x and minus one. And the dx cancels out. So I'm not going to write the dx. Okay, and the dx cancels out here, but there's still one dx remaining, so. All right, now look what happens as lim as dx approaches zero. This term just becomes zero because there's a dx here. And no matter what these are, since these are all constants, dx will just approach zero and make the whole term zero. Now we only have to look at this. What happens to this? This just becomes negative x and x n minus one over x n. Well, this becomes zero, so times x n. Okay, and um, let's let's combine these two. Negative n x n minus one x two n, and then let's combine these two. We get negative n over x two n minus n plus one because uh, that's the exponent rule. If they're um, on opposite sides of the fraction, you subtract them equal negative n x n plus one. And that's the proof. Now, um, let's just, what this means is like, uh, let's say I have one x four. The derivative of this would be, so if this is n, if four equal n, then the derivative of this would be negative four over x over five. And that should make sense. Okay, thank you. This is the proof. And the main part of proof is you gotta understand this. Everything else is a factor of dx squared, and if it's a factor of dx squared, they just end up being zero, like here. It's only these two terms that are not a factor of um, dx, and this is this is the a dx squared, and this is a you, you can not exactly prove, but this comes from binomial theorem. But you don't really need to know binomial theorem to find out that these are the... It, it should be intuitive, but it's kind of hard to explain at the same time. Thank you. Or if you want me to explain it uh, one more time. Um, so we know xn is the result of multiplying x times x times x n times. So we know xn is a term from this. And we also know n x minus 1 times dx is also a term. So what we do is just... Um, we cover up this, we multiply dx times x times x times x. However, since we're, since we're not using this x, we only have n minus one x's, so we get this. But we can also do it for this. We can also do it for this, and we can do this n times. So that's why this ends up being n times n times what we did for each. Okay, thank you.